Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, April 4th, 2024. I'm on your host, Blessing, Addy Lay Jr. Joining me is the force that is Gary Witta. Hello, it's been a minute. Hasn't Gary, it? it's been forever. I it's been for a while. Just there, how long it's been. Yeah, like I don't we were talking about like for KPD, you I don't know when the last time you've been on this show and if you've even been on the show so in the studio. When I first came into the studio, I tried to sit over here and Barrett's, oh no, KFGD, we sit closer together. I'm like, I, how would I know that? I've never yeah. done it in I, I, honestly I don't think I've ever done it in this studio. I mean, maybe yeah. someone in chat will correct me if I'm wrong, if they remember be me being here for KFGD. If, you've if, done if KFGD, it was, it wasn't more than like once. Or that's twice the thing, is if you've done it in the studio, it must be only yeah, once or twice. I don't think most. so. And I I my, my I still feel like I've not done it at all. Because yeah. I don't like this is I mean, don't get me wrong. I enjoy being this close course, to you, but I mean, like, yeah. this is different. To be fair, I think we're closer today than even us we usually are. are we? I think Bear's trying something new with the. Because on Xcast, they framing. have me here. They have Mike over there because Paris is like virtually in the middle. Mm. But here we're. But even on uh, when I'm hosting with Tim or Greg, I feel like I'm a little bit. Oh, I did bit it with Jared. Inside. I did it one time with Jared. There you go. Oh, did you really? Yeah. That, oh, you did. I listened to that one. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Well, welcome How back can to I the show. I forget that. Sorry, Jared. I mean, listen, Jared Petty, forgettable man. Gary, how you been? I've been okay. Look, so it, I, I've been away from a while, and I'm not going to go into the details. But frankly, I've just been overwhelmed. There's just been so much going on at home, at my work. It got to a point where like something's got to give. I've got to mm -hmm. give something up to like free up some bandwidth. And it ended up being a number of things. But one of them was coming in here every Wednesday to do X cards, which I've missed doing. But I desperately needed the time back. Yeah. Um, and my mental bandwidth back as well because it was just a lot. And I would feel bad on if I if I would come in and I hadn't played anything on xbox that week or didn't have a lot to contribute because i've been so busy i felt like that's shortchanging the audience right so i'd rather not be here than come here and like not you know properly mm -hmm. do it um but the good news is hopefully that's gonna recede yeah. a little bit um and i'll be able to come back and, and and be around more often hopefully for kfgd and whatever else yeah i hope you're i hope it's a good busy though no it's good it's it's good but you know it's, i get stressed out very easily mm -hmm. i get overwhelmed very easily i've got two kids we've had like a, a couple of sicknesses go through the house with norovirus oh, uh, no. colds and flu my um office f downstairs office flooded just before the holidays oh, that sucks. and we just had, had to have that. all new flooring put in it's a huge oh, hassle because you've got to take everything out to have floors put in just just a lot yeah and it was just it just endless like oh ne it never stops Mm -hmm. um and like it got to the point where coming in on i was like oh shit i've got to go go do, i've got to go do kind of funny but i have to do all this other shit as well like i just couldn't i couldn't make it all fit in the box yeah so x cast had to had to be shelved temporarily but i'm i'm, I'm coming back have you had the chance to play things or like have you been watching movies have you been yeah taking yes. that time to consume the media that you want to yeah i um uh just sort of just finally yesterday saw dune yeah the second uh, one yeah the second one um, because the, the only reason it took so long was because I wanted to see it in 70 millimeter IMAX. Uh -huh. My buddy, John Spates, who co-wrote the movie said, that's the way to see it. Like go make sure you see 70 millimeter IMAX. So, and it took forever to get, there's only one 70 millimeter. I don't want to see the bullshit, the fake, the Limax as yeah. they call it, like the real IMAX. You gotta, one you gotta of those get to the, the Metreon for gotta sure. Gotta go to the Metreon. And it's hard. It was even a week out, like the best seats, like the cluster in the center, which is where you want to be for IMAX. Like yep. you, you want to be in the front row. Um, they were always sold out. And so fi we finally got tickets. You have to babysitters and everything. It's a production to go to the movies when you have kids. Mm -hmm. um, but we finally went yesterday and it was great. And I'm really glad I saw it in that format because absolutely that's the way to see it. What are your it. thoughts? Because I, I saw Dune 2 all the way through. I, I slept the first time because I was just very tired. I had to come back from a long trip. And so like an hour in, I just was gone I, but um, I went to see it actually on Sunday again and I watched the full thing and I loved it. So I went so I w went back and watched the we didn't see the first one on the big screen we saw I just watched it on on Mac because it was free on Max at the same time on HBO. Mm -hmm. So we watched it I got a big TV and it was great. I really really liked it. Um I did think it was a bit slow because that's the nature of the book and I think they were faithful to it. I enjoyed the onion headline that said Doom Part 2 will pick up exactly where audiences fell asleep during the first one. Yeah. Oh that's good. <laughs> that's really that's pretty good. That was good. But the second one of course is a lot more action, right? There's a lot more going on. It feels more consequential. Just I just a I, just a better movie overall. I think it's going to be really interesting to watch them both back to back as like one like one like, what, like six epic. hour epic yeah, yeah whatever however long the, it is the, i so i watched dune one for the first time all the way through um about a month ago so to get ready for dune two and the way i describe it is like dune one is like you're playing the tutorial to then like get to dune two and have the actual like full experience right because dune two is so action-packed yeah and it feels it great delivers sequences. on every single it thing that great great action up. sequences yeah and um i'm not a dune expert by any means but apparently people know a lot about dune but telling me that 
they're gonna, the third movie is going to be kind of a struggle because that second book, the first movie is obviously the first two books. Mm -hmm. And now the third movie would theoretically, be, I guess, be Dune Messiah. Yeah. And Dune Messiah apparently goes to some very odd places. And it's a very strange movie, a very strange story. Which I, so that might be the hardest one for them to adapt. I love into hearing like a that because movie. I already feel like Dune one and two is, are very strange movies, and they go to odd places, partly because they just throw you into that universe. Yeah, and it's very like the book; it's very uncompromising. Like, this is the way the world is, right? And we're not going to spoon feed it to you. Just like you know, try to keep up. Yeah. And the movies, God bless them. Like Hollywood usually tries to dumb that shit down, but they stay. I think they stay largely true to the kind of the hard it's hard sci-fi right and yeah. i think that it is, it's rare to see hollywood make hard sci-fi at that level and it's only because it's such a you know legendary book that they were able to you know do that there's very few excuses you can have to say we're going to spend this much money and do a three-hour movie and do two of them and it's going to be hardcore sci-fi not mm -hmm. like a popcorn roller coaster movie like dune is probably one of the only like lord of the rings would be another good you know, it's, it's that there's quality, a, there's it's, a it's that class few. of book that you can do that with yeah but it seems like they did it i'm not again i'm not a dune super fan i read the first one many years ago and i liked it um, although again, it's, it's hard work, right? It's very, it's a dense book. Yeah. Like not only is it thick, but every page is dense mm -hmm. with stuff and you've got to learn all this mythology. And I think that they were like uncompromisingly true to that. Like I said, the first movie's slow. There's not a lot that happens until the third act with the big, you know, Harkonnen attack. But then the second one gets to be kind of the third act of the, of the overall story, yeah. right? Where all the big explosive action happens. That's the thing is I... I think for Dune 1, there are plenty of people, including me, that are like, okay, this is kind of boring, it's kind of slow, right? And like for me, it wasn't until my second watch of it uh, where like, or the second attempt at watching it, where I was like, okay, no, I'm buying into this universe. Like I can understand more of what they're doing here because it is, hey, we're submerging you into this world. We're not going to explain anything. We're not going to like give you the details. We're not going to give you the actual tutorial on this world. We're just going to present yeah. this as is and give you sort of... I guess the start of Paul Atreides story and then like get you to where yeah. you need to be for doing two. Yeah. And, and by doing that, it's like, it works. Yeah. You know? I, made I had it, to buy into the world. They made it at the highest level, you know, with the best, it's, it, it, all the actors, I think are, are pretty, pretty much perfectly cast right yeah. all the everyone oh, is, dude, the cast in dune 2 is so the cast incredible. is sick right Everyone's every major it. character is like javier bardem in particular i think is incredible oh, in dude. that movie so fucking good the, i don't want to spoil things for do for dune 2 but there are like a few um appearances from actors where i'm like you're in this movie <laughs> like the only, this is ridiculous so the only thing that bummed me out was there's no duncan idaho in it right yeah he dies in the first one and i, I loved that character mm -hmm. but again spoilers if you've never read dune messiah mm -hmm. comes back in the oh, next shit. one Oh shit! Because they fucking cloned him. That's fucking sick. Yeah, I love that. Somehow, Duncan Idaho <laughs> returned. <laughs> well, Gary, oh, I can't sorry, wait. just one last thing. The oh, other thing that makes me because they go they go much more into the Bene Gesserit of it all in the second movie. Yeah, makes me excited, more excited than I was for the TV show because they're doing a TV series about the Bene Gesserit that's set. Oh, in are this, they really? Yeah. I didn't know about this. Are yeah. they really? Yeah, it's called the Sisterhood. Oh, that's pretty cool. That could be cool. That's pretty cool because there, there's some, there's there's some fiendish motherfuckers as Bene Gesserit. Yeah. Oh man. Well, Gary, somehow you've returned to kind of funny games. Oh, and you've been asking what I was playing. Mm -hmm. If you if you ever want me to come in and talk about Hell Divers, I can do that all fucking day. We gotta get you I'm on a, a show level 50 with, with Sky Greg. Admiral. I'm the, I'm the man. Like yeah. if you're in if you're in the shit, if the automatons or the terminids are fucking up your day and you're like begging for a miracle and you put out an SOS beacon and you see me come in, Witter, level fifty two, whatever it is now, Sky yeah. Admiral. Trust me, your, your fucking problems are over. Oh my god. I'm gonna <laughs> You're coming through play. like a superhero? You're coming through like X-Men or like, uh, uh, what's his name, Cyclops in the last X-Men cartoon? I don't know if you've seen any of X-Men I saw X -Men the uh, X-Men 97? Yeah. I've seen the first couple. There's like the scene where Cyclops does the superhero landing where he yeah. lasers his beam to the ground. Yeah. That's the way that you're coming into Helldivers 2. You're like, hey motherfuckers, I'm I would, here. I'm I would, here to clean would, shit up. I would pay real money, <clears throat> sorry, for like an emote or something that... <laughs> let's you superhero land out of the pod. That'd yeah. So fucking oh good. my god. Yeah. No. We got. Have you have you played with Greg yet? Because Greg's obsessed. No. Because well, he, he's never on. He's, I have him on my friends list. He's never online. He must have me blocked or hidden or something. Because I I'm on. <laughs> trust me. I have two hundred plus hours in that fucking game. Uh -huh. I run with two different squads. I am on every day. I've ne hardly ever seen him online. He must have. He must have his status set to like something hidden. Maybe or he's full of shit and he's not actually playing that much. I don't know which one. That'd it is. be the biggest conspiracy. Yeah. that Greg's not actually playing the game. But I assume maybe I mean, he's reviewing know, something. All I, all I know is I never see him on the, on my friends list as yeah. online. He's, we got to get there. Get you and Greg on a Hellblade or uh, Helldivers two like oh. hype cast. I'm hundred because Greg won't stop talking. About I literally this game. have a T-shirt that says "Ask me about Helldivers." You I, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I had it made. You can go. You can actually buy it from my merch store. Um, no one's bought it yet because yeah. What's the link? Who else would? Um, I don't remember. It's on Fourth Wall. <laughs> if you like, search for my name on fourthwall.com. There's a merch store. It's where I sold my gun dog shit. Uh, but um, so is it a? I was at an Easter egg thing 
with some friends and me and another buddy who play Helldivers all the time were talking about it. And a third person came over mm. and said, oh, I've heard about this. What is Helldivers? And it's like, well, oh, let like, me like, tell like, you. Two hours later, <laughs> it's like, you can't help yourself. It's like, oh, it's so cool. The, the best description I have for that game is the reason why I love it so much. And much has been said about why the game is so good. Mm -hmm. It's my game of the year. I don't fucking care what else comes out this year. That's awesome. Unless, if GTA 6 I gotta came get more out this year, Hell maybe. Oh, no. I mean, they already announced it for next year. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that's what it would take. Oh, it would take that level of thing. Um, I love it so much. And much has been... I, I think it's... it's, it's the, I can't remember the last... A bunch of my friends said, I can't remember the last time I had this much fun playing a video game. Because yeah. it just has all those epic moments, right? It's like every game is like, oh, shit, I can't believe that happened. Mm -hmm. So fucking good. That's awesome. Um, the best way I can describe it is... The reason why I love it is it's basically all the shit that I used to draw in the margins of my books at school made into a video game. So yeah. it's like, oh, you're, a, you're, you're an elite space commando and you drop into these enemy planets and there's fucking giant bugs and there's robots with chainsaws and lasers, but you can drop nuclear bombs on them. Like You sound like an eight-year-old kid when you talk about this game. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so fucking cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I had a trip to LA that I was supposed to go, uh, uh, supposed to leave right after the show. Trip ended up getting canceled or postponed. I'm going to go later. Um, but now I have like a couple days free. And so maybe I'm just going to play Hell Divers 2. Maybe that's why I spend my days You've got to get in and try to figure got, it out. You, you, you're missing out if you're not <laughs> Barry playing Barry's shaking his head because he told me earlier to play Persona 3. <laughs> I was like, you got a free weekend. It's maybe, may, maybe it's also because it seems like it's going to be a relatively quiet, not to diss Hell Divers 2 in any way, because I'm telling you, it's my game of the year, no question. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on all, it would be on every game of the year list this year. Yeah. It, it'd be a disgrace if it's not. How can it not be? I got to play more of this game. Um, oh my God, it's so fucking good. Um, but I think also because it seems to be like a relatively quiet year and there aren't like, there aren't that many like mega super anticipated games that are like, oh, that's that's going to be in the game of the year conversation, right? Unless I'm missing some. I mean, there's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. There's the Indiana Jones game coming in November. I mean, we're going to talk about Hellblade sure, 2 sure, today. Sure, sure. But like, okay, so guaranteed it's a lock on every every game of the year list. And I, I think mm. it might actually take some home as well. Because it, it's, it, it's, it's like I said before, it's a fucking video ass game. Game. Which speaks to like, me. It is I a love proper that. video game. God. Like shit blows up real good. The guns feel fucking good. Like shooting bugs in the face feels good. Every time that. you drop in those pods, you're like, fucking let's go. I you're doing you doing, sold me more than anything else I've heard. Doing a hell dive, I said this to someone the other day, is like going to Las Vegas. On the way in, you're like, let's fucking go. On yeah. the way out, you're like, I'm so fucking glad to get out of that place. Yeah, it's like, oh man, thank God I made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gary, you're talking, you're talking about Helldivers 2 being for sure your game of the year. Let's see if Hellblade 2 can make a dent in that because today's stories include Hellblade 2 previews have dropped, Gear 6 news could come this summer, and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday, we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about live on YouTube, Twitch, and on podcast services around the globe if you love what we do support us with the kind of funny membership on patreon or youtube to get all of our shows ad free watch us record them live and get a daily exclusive show for a chance to be a part of the show submit your thoughts and opinions as youtube super chats as we go housekeeping for you a new episode of the x cast is up right now with jeff grubb as a special guest you can get that uh, over on youtube.com slash kind of funny games we'll talk more about that later uh saturday able gamers is throwing its virtual gala to raise money for its mission of making games for everyone you can buy your ticket uh to hobnob with internet friends and celebrities and your physical box of real loot at ablegamers.org use the code kfbf to get 10 percent off your tickets and boxes Thank you to our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, Kieran Hovisapien, and Delaney Twining. Today we're brought to you by the Kind of Funny membership, but we'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is, and forever will be, the Roper Report. <laughs> it's time for some news. We have five stories today. A baker's dozen. God, I'm having such deja vu, like Barrett saying baker's dozen, and it's it's what fun is having you back. Be. It's like, oh, on the shit, show. this feels like something from another life. It's been a while since it's been 17 minutes until we get to story number one. <laughs> is that always is, is that's that a Gary Wood thing? Does that only happen with me? Usually, well, to be fair, we've had a lot to catch up on. I've been away. I mean, for that's a while. fair. Yeah, you, you asked me questions and I answered them. And we're also like in the new year, we've tried to make the show a bit tighter, right? We've okay. been trying to nail, uh, do an hour. I also didn't prep you for later in the show. There's a little bit of a difference with right. um, the transition after the last story, okay, but all right. we'll get there. We'll roll with it. Um, but for now, let's talk about story number one. Story number one is a Hellblade 2 preview roundup. Uh, Hellblade 2, the previews went up today. I'm pulling from a couple of different sites. I'm going to start off with IGN, and then I'm going to hop over to Polygon. Before we even get into it, Gary, I know you're you're an ex-cast person. Mm -hmm. I assume that means you've talked a lot about Hellblade 2 up in this, uh, uh, until this point. Are you excited for Hellblade 2? Where's your level of hype for yeah, it? Yeah, my... Um my excitement, I mean, I, so I didn't play the first one. 
So mm. my, my excitement for it is, is tempered somewhat. My wife played it. Leah really liked it. Um, and so I think she'll probably want to play the second one as well. And technically, obviously, it looks like a technical marvel, as yeah. all those Ninja Theory games always do. Um, my thing, when we were doing like the showcase, we were talking about like predictions for the Xbox showcase on one of the previous X casts. And I was like, with, that, with Hellblade, like, just, just, just give me, just, let's get on with it. Give me the game. I, I can't watch another trailer. Mm -hmm. I was like, going through the show notes. Uh, and it said that this, and it was reminding me that this, that the game was announced alongside the Xbox Series X in 2019. Yeah. Yeah. It's five years ago, this game was announced. Yeah. So come, let, let, let's, let's fucking get on with it. Let's get, let's hop into the preview. So let's start off with uh, Simon Cardi at IGN who put up his preview titled Hellblade 2 is shaping up to be another beautiful nightmare. As I slowly worked my way through an Icelandic settlement freshly ravaged by rampaging Northmen, I found myself flanked by bubbling volcanic pools and a pile of mangled corpses left to rot by their creators. Ahead, along a bloodied path stretching to the distance, dread field bellows soundtracked an ominous pulsating glow. It was a sort of glow that erupts into the night sky as if Earth's core is trying to escape from its shell. A deep orange light that bursts and fades like the heartbeat of the devil himself. It was a nightmare scenario, but one that only made me want to delve deeper into what, into what further terrors await me in Senua's saga Hellblade 2. Following the traumatic events of the first game, Senua is now on a journey to Iceland to hunt down the, the Vikings who destroyed her home. This but, is the trailer with the giant, right? Because we've seen this a million times. I think so. Yeah, yeah. these are. I don't think there was a new trailer in any new footage no, that no, popped no. this previous. Uh, but not all is as it seems on the Scandinavian island. As otherworldly creatures, like I never know how to say this one, Draugr. I believe Draugr is probably the right way to say okay. it. It doesn't come up that much in conversation. Uh, and giants roam its shores. I spent a good portion of my playtime listening to the death echoes of a recently pillaged village, uh, learning about what had happened there before moving inland uh, to be welcomed by, by a frightening ritual scene de uh, delivered from hell. Here, I met a mysterious man set to be the ritual's next sacrifice before Snua intervened in an attempt to rescue him. He clearly has a connection to Snua's past, but the rest remains unknown. Much of the story of Hellblade 2 is still shrouded in the mystery to me, uh, despite having played nearly an hour of it. This story, or this sort of story first ethos in a high production value package, is one you'd more typically expect from a PlayStation Studios game, not only in Hellblade's aesthetic and setting similarities with Sony Santa Monica's God of War, but also in the way it approaches its mature subjects of family trauma and mental health issues. As those familiar with the original will know, uh, though, Hellblade 2 plays much differently from God of War, instead opting to emphasize even further its priority of narrative ambitions over action. So that's the blurb from the IGN article. Of course, go over to IGN, read the full thing if you want the uh, full context around it, and even more from Simon Cardi. I have one more I'm going to read from, from Ollie Walsh at Polygon. A little bit longer, but I think it's a lot of good stuff. So that preview is titled, Hellblade 2 will finally show us what an Unreal Engine 5 game can do. Mm. It reads like this. I wasn't expecting to experience a next-gen moment when I traveled to Cambridge, UK to visit the Ninja Theory studio. Did you say Cambridge? Cambridge. Cambridge. Cam it's Cambridge? Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. It is very famously Cambridge. I would never have guessed that. Cambridge. Well, All right, you learned a new thing. Uh, to Cambridge, UK to visit the Ninja Theory studio and play Sanua Saga Hellblade 2. But I got one. Uh, oh, but I got one. It's an astonishingly lifelike narrative action game that applies Unreal Engine 5's tech, Microsoft's resources, the company owns Ninja Theory, and the unique processes of a, a smallish team of technical artists to create something at once grounded and vividly hyper real. There's nothing else quite like it. Uh, you would expect a dedication to craft in any game led by three technical artists, but that still wouldn't prepare you uh, for, the, for the extraordinary lengths Ninja Theory is going to uh, in pursuit of its realism. The playable results of the game, uh, game's fully mo-capped fighting system are quite unique. Combat in Hellblade 2 is one, uh, on, is one on one only, slow paced and very brutal. In the fight scenes of the demo I played, which also featured pattern spotting puzzles and some atmospheric grueling traversal, there's a heightened sense of threat as Sanua faces hulking and aggressive opponents and the characters loom large in the unusually tight camera angles. This might not be the over-the-top combat of Double May Cry, but it's still very effective. You only need to lay your eyes on Hellblade 2 briefly to understand that you're seeing the next evolution of game technology. It's not just the engine, though. There are a bunch of factors aligning to make Hellblade 2 a tech showcase. For one, the game design is, is extremely focused. This isn't some wild open-world simulation. It's a linear, narrative-first action game. Touring the studio, Microsoft's investment in Ninja Theory starts to make a lot more sense. 
The tech giant hasn't just acquired a boutique developer, but also an R&D unit that explores the technical and artistic frontiers of a specific game-making process. This is the final paragraph. The result is a game made with an unusually unusual degree of focus. Hellblade 2 won't necessarily be to everyone's taste with its slow pace, deliberate inputs, and highly scripted cinematic presentation. It struck me as a modern successor to something like the 1983 interactive animation Dragon's Lair. As intense and dramatic as the section I played was, it remains to be seen whether the game's story, a more outward journey for a more mentally balanced Senua, can connect as deeply as Hellblade's trip into her darkest fears, but there's no doubting the craft on display play or the immersive sense of presence this game has it may be a sequel but it feels like the start of something like a true next gen experience should i included all that because as i read this preview uh, before the show i was like this all sounds so fascinating and fantastic mm -hmm. um i played the first hellblade i fucking love the first hellblade and the i think the thing that jumped out at me the most while playing that game you know the story the story was amazing the combat's cool but like just how technically advanced that game felt from playing it from a game from a small team felt like a next step, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the big things that Hellblade 1 does is it conveys the psychosis that Senua, the main character, is going through by using binaural audio where you hear voices coming right. from different directions. And like she, ha she hears these voices in her head that are like, you know, freaky, creepy, like coming from different angles, all this shit, right? And you feel it feels so uneasy all throughout playing I that think that's, game. I think, honestly, that's why my wife, who enjoyed playing it, eventually tapped out. She didn't finish it, I think, because it was, like, it, 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 it's very unsettling. Yeah, it's super unsettling, but also, I think, really nails conveying what Sunu as a character is going through. Because you hear it, you see it, you see in the way that they use FMV mixed in with there, too, right? Like, there is a performance to Sunua that really stands out and really feels like something special when you're playing the first Hellblade, which is why I think the actress that played Sunua won a bunch of awards, right? It is oh, no, we understand what you're putting into this performance. And coming into Hellblade 2 with that context and reading through this preview, I'm like, oh, this feels like it's going to be another step. It feels like it is them really flexing, hey, what can we do with Unreal Engine 5? What can we do with uh, how we've R&D'd as a studio? And like, how do we really make something that pushes the boundaries? Which is why I think at least a game like this being seven hours long, because it's like, hey, we're going to make something very special in a very tight package. I have a bunch of thoughts. But yeah. Just randomly, first of all, the Dragon's Lair comparison seems like a weird one. I mean, Dragon's Lair is barely a game. That's a thing where you just push one button, right? Left, yeah. right, up, whatever it is. You push one button at the right time. I don't know if he's trying to suggest that the game is like more cinematically scripted and there's not a ton of gameplay. I don't think that's the case. So I don't quite get the Dragon's Lair. Because mm -hmm. as much as I love Dragon's Lair, I don't understand the comparison in, in this case. Um, Unreal Engine 5 is obviously super exciting. And, and I do think that going back and looking at that video again, Clearly, yes, incredible. Yeah, right. I, I think when it comes out, it will probably become the be considered to be the best looking game of this current generation. I would think. Yeah, right. And that's up against some pretty stiff competition because it really does look. Phenomenal. It looks incredible. It actually makes like I kind of maybe I do want to play it just because it looks so fucking good. Um, but in terms of Unreal Engine Five. I feel like I'm still waiting for some of these YouTube videos that we said, can you believe this is Unreal Engine 5? It looks like real life, and it does. Yeah. I'm still waiting for that to show up in a video game. The closest we've come is that Matrix, and I haven't seen anything like in an actual shipped game that comes have, close to the stuff in that Matrix demo they put out. Have you seen the Cyberpunk mod that was making the rounds the no, other day? No, what's that? I, it, somebody made a photorealistic mod oh, they uh, did? for Cyberpunk 2077. And it looks like real life. There's some photorealistic GTA stuff out there that's pretty cool. But yeah, but I mean, you have to install so many mods, and you have to have such a rig to make it work. Like, I never, I never bothered with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by this. I think them talking about combat too, like that's the Why one thing Barrett, that I want Barrett them. Why is trying to point out that this is a, a, as good a looking game? Or no, this is another Unreal Engine Five game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, this okay, is this, one I brought yeah, up. This, 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 I, I mean, think this is a good argument you, of like you can, you can. There's a step up, right? You can tell. I, th I think that's right. There's a step up in the in the, in the facial um, fidelity and animations. This, I mean, obviously this is all cinematics, but um, I mean, yeah, I mean, this the facial stuff here is is second to none. I think yeah, Hellblade's on this level assets. as well. But man, I mean, the, the scene where you see Black Panther like uh, delivering his lines, right, where he's hollering, where he's yelling at um, Captain America. Mm -hmm. That the detail in that character looks yeah, incredible. It's remarkable. Um, yeah, Barry, if you can bring up this video that I I, I, I just dropped, so it's. Cyberpunk 2077 with photorealistic mods and it's somebody that's like driving through the city. Okay. And 
I stared at this. I still don't believe <laughs> that it's real. Yeah, point. so this is the kind of unreal. So this is the the, the the fidelity that you see in these UE5 demos that they put out where it's like you literally cannot tell whether this is real life or not, right? Yeah. This could be this could be shot on video. It's like obviously like, there's some un there's a lot of uncanny going on here because it is a game, but with the lighting, with I don't know exactly what they're doing with this mod or like what they're running this on. Um, once they get further into the video where they're driving through, it looks fantastic. Yeah, because I was going to say right now this is just easy, right? Right now, yeah, this is static models. models. But um, when I've seen stuff like this with GTA Five, because there's some photorealistic stuff of GTA Five, it's it's a it's a lot. It, it, what they're not telling you is I think it's a lot to get this running. This is not just like a plug and play mod. Yeah, if it's anything. That's the like thing GTA. is if I try to and, play this on my PC, my PC. Yeah, and of course you've got to. I mean, I've I've got a forty ninety, you know, fucking beast of a machine, and it would probably struggle to run this. I don't yeah. know what you need to run something like this. Maybe like double forty nine. And again, even here, know. there's like a lot of uncanny, right? But like, it still looks really cool. No, it looks great. Makes you wonder why didn't the game look like this to begin with. Yeah. Well, I guess because the technology I mean, now has the improved game since great. then. Like, so Cyberpunk 2 would look like this, maybe, right? I don't know, but like... Or Witcher 4. We'll, Witcher 4 will look like this, right? Because that's on UE5. But like, will, be, will, will we get to a point where games look like this? Yeah, of course you will. I don't know if this looks, games to look like yeah, this. Yeah, of course we will. This looks almost like... I don't... It's looks, it looks real to the point where almost... It, I think it's sacrificing a lot unless, of style. Unless you're, unless you're expecting the trend that's been going on from, for the, literally the last 50 years of video game graphics getting better, progressively better and better and better mm -hmm. and higher fidelity and more like real life. Unless, unless you're expecting that to somehow change after 50 years of going in one direction. Yeah, of course it's But I happen. think there's a, there's a point in which maybe we've gone too far, right? Because I still... I, for me, graphics are cool. Graphics are neat. I love looking at whatever is like the latest NVIDIA. Oh, man, we got... AI upsampling stuff going on and the cyberpunk thing looks incredible. I think that's fascinating and really cool up to a point, but I think at a certain level, you're going to start giving up style. Like I look at this cyberpunk mod and I'm like, this is really fucking cool. But also I don't know if I would want to play that game for 30 hours just cause like it looks, it just looks like any street I can drive down. Like I want something to like shine. I want something that has well, a little no, I mean, bit of pizzazz there's a, there's to a style. There's a difference between style and the technical execution of the graphics. I mean, we, sure. we were just talking about Dune, right? That's a movie. That has photorealistic images, but it's not short on style. That's fair. Right? Yeah. So, I, I, but I think what's going to happen is, it's not a question of whether or not we can do it. Clearly, we can. The technology is only going to get better and better. It's a question of, like you said, are we, is it going to get to a point where it starts to become uncomfortable? Yes. Are you, like, when you're playing, like, Call of Duty 10 years from now, and it looks like fucking... You know, it body looks like cam real life. footage. It looks like real life. Is that? Is there going to be a point where, like, uh, I kind of liked it when but it was a bit more video game? -y. I think we have the same conversation, like every generation or two, where yeah. we get to the point where all oh, games are so realistic. Like even with VR now, I I feel like we've had this conversation recently. It might have been VR, might have been a different thing. Um, but like with VR, you put a Grand Theft Auto game in VR, and people are going to like complain about it, right? Fox News is going to write a story talking well, about this I mean, is that, too and, much. But, and by the way, that's the other thing is when they talk about going in one direction, I do think it will fork. I think that I think that graphics will continue to get better and better on a 2D display. Yeah. But I think as 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 up and down the history of VR has been over the last 10 years or so, um I do think it's going to get there. And I think 10 years from now you're going to be looking at photorealistic graphics on a 2D panel, but I also think you're going to be looking at a different fork of like really amazing stuff happening in VR. Yeah. And that's going to go the prices will come down. Um, it'll get better. I mean, I, I know PSVR 2 was like a big shit show, but Apple Vision Pro, as expensive as it is, is really a, an amazing... Like, you think, oh man, when this is actually affordable for most people, mm -hmm. it's going to be incredible. Like, it's a very... The stuff that exists now, to me, is really just like a preview of what we're going to have, like the really good shit we're going to have 10 years from now. So we're going to keep on the same topic of conversation because story number two is that Hellblade 2 runs at 30 FPS with a dynamic resolution on Xbox Series X and S. I'm pulling from Tom Ivan at Video Games Chronicle. Hellblade 2 runs at 30 FPS with a dynamic resolution on Xbox Series X. That's according to a new preview by GamePro, which reports that the game won't offer any graphic modes uh, and that the frame rate can only be increased on PC. The game's visuals, uh, visual effects director, Mark Slater Tunstill, reportedly told the site uh, that the decision should make the experience feel more cinematic, similar to movies that run at 24 FPS. Another major first-party Xbox Series X S game, Starfield, also had its frame rate locked to 30 FPS. Ninja Theory owner Microsoft announced Hellblade 2 alongside the Xbox Series X in 2019. It recently confirmed the game will be released May 21st. Uh, Hellblade 2 will uh, be digital only. It's getting more context. We don't need all that. But this is one that's making the rounds, right? And I feel like this is one that always, uh, well, quite a few times recently, we've had games that are, hey, we're running at 30 FPS or we're running at uncapped. I think Dragon's Dogma is an example of like, oh, here's something that's not necessarily the performance mode that people have been trained to mm -hmm. desire this generation. 
do, is this something you care about, right? Like hearing that Hellblade to you is going to be 30 FPS and that's the option. That's the, the one option. Does that, do you care? I don't care about the numbers. I care about the experience. What I care more about is, yeah. again, providing it is indicative of the game that will actually ship. What I care more about is what I just saw on screen, right? I don't care what the, the, the number is just a number, right? What yeah. I care about, what does it look like? If it's, if it's coded in a certain way and the graphics, again, I'm not an expert, but if they make the game in a certain way, it can be 30 frames a second and still look fucking great. Helldivers is 30 frames a second on PS5. I don't see anyone complaining about that. It looks great. Mm -hmm. it's, does it look smooth? Does it look, can it manage what the game is asking it to do at a frame rate that doesn't look like it's, ch it's you know, chugging or stuttery or not you know, seamless? I just care about what it looks like. If you tell you like, like oh this game's amazing, like, oh, you know this is running in thirty frames. Like, oh wow, like, I didn't know that because like you don't care about the number when you're actually experiencing it. Some games look shitty at thirty frames a second. Some games look really good at thirty frames a second. So I guess higher numbers are always better when it comes to frames per second. Sixty is technically better than thirty, but like I'm, I'm not one of these people that shits the bed when I see the oh the game's going to be thirty frames a second. Show me the game. Show me what it actually looks like. Then I'll decide. I'm not going to reach a judgment based on just hearing a number yeah. six months before the game ships. I'm a, I'm of two minds. My first one is that I I'm somebody who notices right. Like I I whenever I'm playing a new game, I need to play it in performance mode, right? If, I, if I'm given the option, I want to play in performance mode because I just value f smooth frame rates, especially for things that are gameplay heavy, right? Like I love playing, like if a Ratchet and Clank or a Spider-Man game comes out, immediately I want to like switch to perform performance mode, even though I forgot to do that with Spider-Man 2 and it fucked me up. But Performance like, mode always. Performance mode every single time. That Someone said, in chat is uh, quite right. So Helldivers does have 60 frames in performance mode. Yeah. Right, but again, you're, it's everything. It's still a trade-off, right? Everything in even when you're, the fucking yeah. PS5 Pro comes out, there's, I guarantee you're still going to be making that trade-off. But like, the, for me, of the other side of it, and this is kind of where I firmly stand with Hellblade Two, comes in that uh, sentence where the visual effects director uh, says that uh, this decision should make the experience feel more cinematic, right? Like this is something that they're do doing for the art direction of the game. Hey, we're making a game that is narrative first. We're making a game that's about the experience. We're making a game that is about the like you know, putting you in the shoes of this character and telling you a story. For me, 60 FPS in performance mode, in the ways that I want it, right? It's purely for gameplay. If I'm playing Sifu, I want it in 60 FPS. If I'm playing a first-person shooter, if I'm playing, like, something that's fast action or something where I'm going to be lost in the gameplay, I want it to be for there's performance no, There's mode. no comparison. I remember when I, when I first played um, Like a Dragon, and I, the first thing you do is make that decision, right? You move around a little bit in both modes to see what feels yeah. good for you. The quality mode, like the difference in the fidelity, the higher fidelity in the graphics, I barely noticed it. But I certainly noticed the difference, you know, when I'm spinning the camera around between 30 and 60 frames. Yeah. Performance mode every time. Performance mode every time. But for a game like Hellblade 2, where they're like, hey, we're telling a story, we're doing something narrative, we're trying to do, we're trying to make art here. Mm -hmm. And this was an artistic decision to have a 30 FPS. I'm like, do your thing. And then, yeah, like you, I'm like, we'll play it. And if... 30 FPS feels like a hindrance as I'm playing it. Sure, they don't complain, but like, these things based on a, on, a, on a number. It's silly. Like, yeah. actually have the experience and then make your decision. And also, they have to think about the series S. And by the way, we don't talk enough. I mean, we do it all the time on the x but we don't talk enough generally about what an amazing little box the Xbox Series S is. Oh, dude. My wife's playing Plague Tale 2 right now, mm -hmm. which, you know, we're so behind. Like, we, pl we play games when we get to them. She's finally playing Plague, Plague Tale 2 Requiem. Um, and she's been playing it on the Series X in the living room, but on one particular occasion, she wanted to go... And like, just like chill out on the bed and play it in the bedroom. We have a Series S back there. So I installed it on the Series S for her. After she played for a couple of hours, I said, D did you notice much of a difference? She said, no, I, I couldn't tell any difference at all. Mm -hmm. like, so, I mean, I'm sure it's different with some games, but like for a lot, there is, doesn't seem to be much of a drop off. On a, and Plague Tale is like a, is similar to Hellblade, right? High end, high fidelity graphics. I was watching her play a little bit on Series S. I'm like, this could be a Series X for all I can tell. Like, Dude, it's not that much of a difference. The Series S is like one of my favorite decisions Xbox has made in the a very long time. The best console for most I, people. I got it for my uh, nephews for Christmas either a year or two. I think it must have been last year. I don't know. I think it was the year before last year. Either way, I got them. I got it for my nephews for Christmas, right? And like, I visited them this last Christmas, uh, and the fact that like they don't they don't care about like the fidelity. They don't care about like anything that they're losing by having an S instead of an x right like they're on there playing fifa fortnite and, and also and they're having two. essentially the same experience everyone and they else have is. xbox game pass as well yep. and like it, it's so crazy to me when i was scrolling through their xbox library right and like 
they have all these games available to them. And I'm thinking back to when I was nine years old, and I would have killed for this. <laughs> like, oh legitimately God. murdered at nine years old I remember this. saving up my pocket money from, like, the paper rounds and stuff that I did and washing cars. And I got enough money to buy, like, whatever the latest hot release on cassette tape was. Like, so what game, what game will I be able to buy this week? Mm -hmm. You know, what? Yeah. I, I, you know, and this is the thing why... It was so bad for kids because I watch a lot of retro videos. And I, and again, I didn't grow up with the NES the way the American kids did. Uh, but like, you know, you would sometimes you would, you would rent the game, right? A lot of it was just rental. But like you rented the game because it was based on a big movie or whatever. Mm -hmm. Got it home and it's shit. And it's but that's the game, that's you've the game got. you're stuck that's, with. You better fucking find a way to enjoy it because that's the only game you've got. It's not like what else is on Game Pass and there's like an infinite fucking kaleidoscope of games available. So we, honestly, we can play... Like, how if, if, you, if, you, if you took me from like the 1980s, transported me to here, showed mm. me what game is like now, and, I, and, and tell me that people are still fucking complaining? Dude, the fact that like I couldn't, I couldn't understand how my nephews didn't have way more games installed on their platform. Because like even with this large library of Game Pass games, you have all this shit that you can play. The games that they have installed are Fortnite, FIFA, and It Takes Two. Mm -hmm. And they barely played It Takes Two because they got frustrated with each other because they're kids. <laughs> and I'm like, you guys have all these games, you're going back to Fortnite. This is fucking crazy to me. But that's just how that's that's how blessed they are, right? Yeah. Like that I'm with you that I'm like, dude, if you went back in time and told me I could I would have all this or that this would be an option for people just to like I mean, own it's the same all with this all shit. Media now. My you know, my my two year olds growing up, you know, she doesn't know any other any other world and you turn on the TV and there's an infinite fucking variety of content. Mm -hmm. I, I remember being excited at 10 years old when they added a fourth TV station. Like, oh shit. Yeah. How am I going to decide now? There's four choices. Oh my goodness. Don't get me started. <laughs> I'm like Nickelodeon <laughs> versus Cartoon Network. And like those are the only options for kids stuff and Disney Channel. But yeah, dude, I think, you know, I don't even know how we got here in the conversation. I don't but know. Well, video like, games are in a blessed it's, it's, place. It's, you know, and like, of course, like we, we were going to complain about on. the frame rates or whatever. But I'm with Hellblade 2 at this, at this moment, just going through the previews, I'm like, yeah, no, I believe them when they say it's an artistic decision, and like I'm down for that, right? I don't think that's a bad thing. I think developers and creatives should have the lead, or should have the space to choose. Hey, no, we envision you playing this game this way, and right. if you get it, and if that artistic decision didn't work for you, guess what? It didn't work for you, and you can complain about it. But I've not played it, so I'm not going to complain. Is it coming out on PC as well? I believe so. Yeah. Good. No, what? No. Yeah, frame it is. It no frame rate worries for me. Exactly. No, um, you can do it on PC and Game Pass as easier. well, right? Yeah. What's not to love? There you go. Also, if you want a good deal, let me talk about patreon.com slash kind of funny and youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Over there, you can get the kind of funny membership, which allows you to watch shows ad free. And speaking of ads, let us tell you about our sponsors. Kind of Funny turns nine years old today. We could have made it nine days without your support. That's why 2024 is all about doubling down on our shows and making it simpler than ever for you to get the most out of our content. Our revamped Kind of Funny membership is your one-stop shop for all our amazing content, which now includes on a weekly basis, the Kind of Funny podcast, In Review, the Kind of Funny games cast, PS I Love You XOXO, the Kind of Funny X cast, the brand new series Kind of Funny Game Showdown. Five episodes of Kinda Funny Games Daily, and five exclusive Gregway vlogs. And five days of streaming fun with me and the gang here in our newly revamped streaming space. It's gonna be filled with a ton of laughter and a whole lot of shenanigans. We'll see you there. That's more than 20 pieces of content a week from an 11 person independent team in San Francisco. That's a lot, and to get the most out of it, all we're asking for is $10. $10 gets you the Kind of Funny membership, and that entitles you to ad-free versions of the shows, the ability to watch the podcast live as we record them, and the exclusive access to my daily show, Gregway. You can get your Kind of Funny membership on patreon.com slash kindoffunny or youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Yes, we are expanding our Kind of Funny membership offering to YouTube so people can take full advantage of the platform they prefer. If you want to go above and beyond the Kind of Funny membership to support us, we will still have higher Patreon tiers, albeit with some changed up perks. We just wanted to make the message as clear as possible that the $10 Kind of Funny membership is for the masses to get all the core content people love. Everything above that is very appreciated. The support means the world to us. You all are the best. But the $10 Kind of Funny membership available on both Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny and YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games is where we see the value of what we do. Kind of Funny is a dream come true and we wouldn't have it without you. We hope if you've ever enjoyed the content, you can support us for at least a month as we prepare for our biggest year ever. Until next time, 
been our pleasure to serve you. And we're back. We got more Xbox news. Story number three, the first Gears of War 6 news will reportedly be coming this summer. This is Chris Golian at Video Games Chronicle. The first news on Gears of War 6 may be coming this summer, according to new claims. Uh, during the latest episode of the Kind of Funny X-Cast, host Paris Lilly uh, made a prediction that Gears 6 news would arrive in the summer, a prediction which was then seemingly verified by that episode's guest, uh, Giant Bomb's Jeff Grubb. Quote, when they showed the Marvel 1943 trailer uh, in Unreal Engine 5 during GDC, I jokingly tweeted, imagine what Gear 6 would look like in Unreal Engine 5, Lily said, because it looks so good. And then somebody from Coalition made a cryptic little subtweet under me about that, which perked my ears on that. So my conspiracy theory is that you do you do tease it this year, and then it's probably a launch game for next gen. That seems to make the most sense to me, end quote. Uh, while Paris's claim was merely a prediction, uh, Jeff Grubb then appeared to suggest it was an accurate one, adding, quote, I will say, I've heard... I've heard some stuff uh, might be happening with Gear 6 this summer, so I think that tease sounds about right to me, Paris. That seems like uh, what we can expect, end quote. Uh, Grub's statement was then shared on Twitter by The Verge senior editor, Tom Warren, who simply said Grub was correct. Uh, Gary, news is coming out from the, your podcast. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we actually broke a story. Yeah, you guys actually broke a story. Um. First of all, interesting. You said that it's it, that potentially would launch, you know, as part of like a next gen lineup. Yeah. When are we? But when are we even thinking about ne- like the, the See, current gen? Not that we talking longer generations, right? The last generation ran what almost ten years. Oh, uh, like seven. How long? How long was the PlayStation Four generation? Well, uh, it was twenty thirteen to twenty twenty. So, okay, so seven years. Yeah. Right, we're four years into this generation, so like, I don't think we. That's like three years off. Yeah, but that's not okay. So that might fit. For, I'm just saying, Gears of War Six is probably not imminent either way. Right. See, I'm I, saying like, I, I don't think, think I don't, it's a little too early to be having like real next gen conversations, don't you think? That's my thing is I think like, we're if very you much mid gen. We haven't even had the fucking refresh, like the mid gen refresh yet, right? PS5 Pro. I think if you right? tease Gear there's 6, an Xbox refresh coming. If you, I think if you if you te- if you tease Gear Six this year, I think it still comes out on Xbox Series X. I don't know if I think the next gen part, right, is just Paris speculating, and then Jeff Grubb is like, I, I think the one part Jeff Grubb is confirming is that it's gonna be teased or shown or something this year. I think by the end of the generation. Yeah, and I think it's been a while since Gears 5. Even if it's a next gen title, I'm quite sure it'll be a crossover because they're not going to not have a Gears of War game ship on their whole install base of X and S, right? They're mm-hmm. going to oh, yeah. want to get it. So, the same way that, you know, with um, Halo Infinite, right? They made sure that there was an Xbox yeah. One version that you could play. Did they? I don't even fucking remember. I'm not a Halo expert. For Halo Infinite? X- uh, it, was there an Xbox One version of Halo I don't know Infinite? actually chat you're wrong how do I not know I feel, like, I feel like something I should know I feel like maybe it was announced but then when they got all the blowback maybe they didn't put it out I'm just, maybe I'm making things up chat this is a you're wrong thing I, I can't th- remember I, th- I feel like they did it did, did yeah, they did. They did. Okay. the Xbox One yeah 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 I so, would not be surprised I think it's a little early to be having the next gen conversation but it does make a lot of sense I think for you know when they launch the next generation uh, for a gears, gears to, be, to be in that somewhere in that mix, it's it is weird to think that, yeah, the next generation of games it might not be that far off, but also just I feel like this generation still feels like it's just taking off, even though it's been four years. Let's say like three and a half well, years. I think we're a, mid, we're right in the middle of the it's generation. It's been a weird time because of the pandemic, right? Yeah, and like. I still, I remember for the first, like I was in Florida recently for my brother-in-law's wedding and I went to a Target and I saw a PS5 in the case. Mm-hmm. Like you could, you said, I'll have that one, please. That's literally the first time I've seen that. Yeah. This generation, four years in. Yeah. And, and Xbox Series X is almost as, you see Series S's occasionally, but like I've never, and, and pandemic, supply chain, all of those weird things. But like this generation still feels weirdly new to me i don't know why that and maybe it's because of the weird years that we've been through mm-hmm. but like yeah we are i think maybe like mid, if the last generation too. was seven i think the one before that was a bit longer P- ps3 xbox 360 was maybe longger oh uh, it was like t- what uh t- 2006 to 2013 i feel like we, we, we usually hit a solid so, seven. Yeah, so we're looking at around like seven or eight years per yeah. generation right which puts us right at the midpoint of this generation assuming yeah. that trend continues which so now we are hearing about right the 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 it's the xbox and ps5 
refreshes are supposed to But I think even in. that, the refresh, so for PS4 Pro. They already did, so they already did the refresh for PS5 in terms of shrinking it down. Yeah, like but I'm talking slim. about a Pro. I, I think both, I think this is my prediction, I don't know for a fact, but I think we get both an Xbox Pro console and a PS5 Pro console this fall. I don't know if you'll get an Xbox Pro. I think you'll get, I think you'll get the one thing that their lineup is currently missing, which is the digital Series X. No disk drive. Mm. See, I think and that might And they'll do the thing the, where they upgrade, like, some, oh, you know, it's a good, slightly faster thing now or whatever, or, like, we've figured out a way to shrink this down. But it's not going to be, like, a measurable increase in performance the way that, they, the, way that the PS PlayStation does it. A lot of people are saying, um, like, there's no Xbox Pro console. I'm saying this based off of the, like, the documents from the court stuff from last year where they had this the cylinder cylinder xbox yeah was there an update on that did phil talk, did phil say i don't, that know, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be that cylinder but it's you know there was there were two things that um xbox was was missing from its lineup one was a a, a series s with a decent amount of hard drive space to mm-hmm. fix that um but the series s now has a terabyte um, shine says there was no pro in those no, documents I, I, we, the, I, we looked at it on the show the x is the pro right Basically, the, the, the S is the base model. Mm-hmm. The X is the Pro. Like something like seventy-five percent of Xboxes, that current generation Xbox, are Series S, mm-hmm. right? Because that's the more affordable one. That's the one that most people get. The hardcore who want to have the best graphics. That's a smaller group. Again, we live in this bubble of like super hardcore gaming enthusiasts, and we forget about all the casuals out there who actually account for the vast majority of the gaming community. People are like the graphics are good enough for me. I don't need to get like super hardcore into it. Mm-hmm. You know, again, there's not much of a difference between the two consoles. Uh, going back and forth. Um, so whether or not it has this cylind- cylindrical shape, I don't know. But I think the disc, the the discless Series X is the one thing that they're missing. So I, th- right I think now. people are saying Brooklyn is just the refresh, right? It's not necessarily a pro thing. So yeah, it's, and look, it's, it's, and again, it's these little things like oh, you know, we you know, it's more power friendly, you know, better Wi Fi. It's just little 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 incremental gotcha. fixes. So yeah, I, I guess in that case, whatever I, I expect something, some refresh this uh, year, I should say. I guess if it's not a pro. I still, I, I think for play on the PlayStation side, which is why I would expect Xbox to do this, but maybe you wait until the next gen. I think both of them want to have some kind of AI upsampling solution. We see how, how uh, NVIDIA is making these waves with uh, the DLSS stuff, and that is making games genuinely look better, right? Like that is pushing things forward. I think PlayStation is trying to figure out how to get that in there. I think Xbox probably in the R&D stage trying to get that in there. If not from a refresh, then I think from whatever the next Xbox console is are we gonna see a ps5 pro this holiday do you think i think so that's my prediction i'm not i'm if i had to put a percentage on it i'd probably say 70 percent. and do you think would is that going to be a worthwhile upgrade for people that already have a ps5 i so i think if you are a hardcore if you are somebody that plays video games and really cares but i you also got the think, giant 4k tv yeah and, you have the giant tv but i think the big factor is gta 6 I right. think GTA 6 is going to make people want to get that best console possible to play yeah, that with. Yeah, that's a good point. And so, yeah, I think you put out some kind of thing that's a jump. Um, but that said, yeah, like I, I, I think Gear 6 also could be a really cool one for that. Like, it, like That's why I, it, it, Xbox also is... Like, I don't want to say they don't believe in um, generations, because I think that's just like bus terms. I think generations happen of, of consoles, right? But I think they're more willing to blur that line of yeah with gear six and come out the year before the next xbox and then we'll just update it you know what think, you know what <laughs> and have they, you play the modern version on with the next xbox you know what i think they should do what's that bring gears to playstation <sighs> why not st- start this conversation again gary why not i mean listen i'm on your side they've already, they've, they've already opened the door right with sea of thieves and hi-fi rush and i understand those are smaller games I don't know that you'll ever see like Halo come to PlayStation because that's Xbox's standard bearer. But I've always made the argument that Gears of War is like a step below. It's like it's 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 they're gonna the youth they do that they'll lose not, Tim Dog. It's not quite S tier. It's whatever is immediately below the S tier on on Xbox. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's a huge franchise, but it's not so big that Xbox needs to be like, oh, it can't be on PlayStation. Put it on PlayStation. Dude, I'm on your side. I'm on your side that like let's put everything on everything. Put Hell Divers 2 on Xbox. Fuck it. Put Spider-Man on Xbox. <laughs> put Zelda on, on PC. That's never going to happen. But like, as far as PlayStation and Xbox, I'm like, yo, put everything on everything. Like, who make more money. Even if it was just like a collection of the older games or whatever. Do like one through three. Yeah. Scale them up. You know, give, I think give if it you're, the remaster treatment. I think if you're smart about it, if I'm like, if I'm trying to do Xbox's business for them, I'm 100% with you that you take the older Gears games Put them on PlayStation. Put them on everything you can, 
and use that as a way to market Gear Six. And not that and have Gear Six come out just on Xbox do this, at the start. At least in terms of the optics, it then puts the pressure on PlayStation to be a, be a, to be a little less closed garden. Do you know what I mean? It's like, hey, look, we're bringing some, we're actually bringing some of our bigger titles mm -hmm. to the PlayStation. How about you bring some of your shit? Over here, I think what would pressure PlayStation in that regard would just be the money, like because right now, like the big the big conversation is Xbox players desperately want to get in on Hell Divers, mm -hmm. but it's a PlayStation Studios game, so seems unlikely to happen. But the, why just do and it? Just in, do the thing. And that's my that's my big argument for it is that I think Hell Divers Two would benefit so much from being on Xbox. Oh, hundred percent. So many people would come through and the, play. The, it. the cross play between PlayStation Five and PC already works great. Yeah, I play with people on both. Um, bring more, you know, more, you know, it's not just on Phil, but you hear Phil say again, right? More games in more places, more games for everyone, play anywhere. Like we, we don't care about walls and barriers. We just want people to have the most games. Can great. Let's do that. Let's see, let's see a bit more cultural I'm curious, exchange. Chat, do we have these numbers of the PC sales of Helldivers 2 versus the console sales? Oh, I, I doubt, because I'll I doubt have to predict, I numbers. think PC sales for Helldivers 2 I mean, might either... All, be equal or may, maybe have, more. I mean, you have Steam metrics, right? Which are like, you know, half a million players yeah. playing concurrently, which is pretty Which incredible, is insane. Right? And, and again, that's only PC. I've got to believe that there's a, more people playing on PlayStation than there are on PC. Yeah, people people in chat are saying more people are on PC for sure. Like 60% oh, really? of sales on PC. Oh, that's weird. I would have thought more people would be on playing on PlayStation. That's the thing is, I, I think as PlayStation, you need to look at that and go, fuck, we got to do this more. Right? Right. Because typically you are, you know, doing the exclusives. You are, you are going for the, for your own audience there. But when you see that amount of people playing on PC, I think you have to ask yourselves, okay, how many more people can we get if we put this on Xbox? Then, right? Like you're gonna get a lot of people in. The game is so fucking popular right now. I think you do it. At the end of the day, it's about making money. And the question is, the, the 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 decision they're gonna make every time is, how do you make more money by claiming Hell Divers, which is a game a lot of people are excited about and want right now, and is very much in the in the conversation as a game you've got to have a PlayStation to play, PC mm -hmm. not included, um, or is there more money to be made by selling millions of copies of it on Xbox as well? Yeah. I, I, Again, I'm not a financial fucking genius like the people that run these companies Bear, are. Barris brought up a story from uh, GamesDistry.biz where they say... 57% of sales coming on PlayStation. And the rest on PC, but this is very this is very much like UK sales. And this that's is, in the UK. And this is but also that could be, I mean, that's week. not unrepresentative. I, my guess, it probably is like that, like 50, 50, 60, 40, something like that. Yeah. But yeah, and like, I, would, I, I don't know what the updated numbers are. Chad is saying 60% on PC. Yeah, that 60% was also back in February, though. So, oh. I just, like, I, so I, that was like the most recent article I could get. I know it's a UK base, but... Uh, I but mean, either way, like, but like how it's can still it, to the how point. How can it be UK based if it's all digital? I don't know, man. Because doesn't UK numbers... Uh, Wait, is there, is there no PS5? Is there no boxed version of Helldivers? I don't believe so. I mean, I, mean, I don't, care, I, I don't even think about boxed games anymore, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I would think there is. But I guess if it's an online-only game, then maybe there isn't. Uh, people in chat saying yes. There is. Oh, there okay, is. There yeah. is a box. All right. Yeah. Very fascinated. But never seen a, it's weird. I've never seen a box version of Helldivers. Too. Since, <laughs> it's yeah, a by myth. the way, since we've now segued inevitably into Helldivers. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can bring up. I can do like six degree. Up. I can get like I. I, I don't what's, care. I what's can, the war I don't care thing? What conversation you're talking about? I can turn it into a hell divers conversation so fucking fast. Um, new war bond, April eleventh for the un, uh, for the uninitiated. War bonds are essentially their battle passes where yep. they where they you know you earn medals and you get new weapons. I gotta say, just in general, and this has been a big part of the conversation around hell divers too. For all the I've said this and I've said this a million times, live service games. The, the idea isn't inherently bad. They've just been poorly executed in many, many high-profile yes. cases. And it's a new kind of game developer. It's a new kind of game design, and we're still learning, or game developers are still learning how to do it. What, but what Arrowhead is doing with Helldivers in terms of the way they're rolling out new content and keeping it fresh, and there's always something new to do, and the story keeps evolving, and there's it just it, it feeling like a live game, like a, like a game that's alive, and there's shit happening all the time. I guarantee you, every, deve every big developer in games right now is looking at what arrowhead is doing and go fuck they they got it right like mm -hmm. we need to be figuring this is what this i was out. talking about yesterday you know we've seen a lot of failures recently a lot of games get shut down in the live service space right a lot of people are trying and a lot of people aren't finding that space and i think a big reason to that is 
that most people right now, or so many gamers right now that are playing live service games are already playing Fortnite or Apex or Destiny or whatever the thing that already exists is. I think Helldivers 2 is carving out a space because it found its own lane. It found its own way to do live service. I think right now, if you're putting out a new big live service game, you can't keep chasing what Fortnite and other big live services are doing because they're already doing it. It is Those people are already dedicated to those games. Absolutely the fucking... I, I think the Division prior to this did it quite well yeah but th this is by far this to me the way the way that arrowhead is is delivering content and keeping it for and trust me i play every day so I, I this is one of the few times i actually know what i'm talking about um is an absolute fucking object lesson in this is how it's done this is how you do a live service game so i do have the playstation blog pulled up for the new uh, war bond i can go through it if you want it's coming yeah. April 11th. Yeah. Um, it reads, uh, Noble Patriots of Super Earth, the time, of the, the time for stealth is over. New Helldivers 2 Premium Warbond has been deployed to all fighting units on front lines across the galaxy on April 11th, codenamed Democratic Detonation. That's fucking awesome. So th I think this is the, the, the big things go boom. Because yeah. Helldivers, one of the things, like I'm telling you, I could talk about it all day, no game ever blows shit up as well as this That's game. If you awesome. like to see fucking shit blow up, Helldivers 2 is the best game you'll ever play. The, uh, this concoction of chaos is packed with explosive weapons, fierce armor, super slick capes, and sweet emotes. Uh, so let loose and make the biggest bangs since the dawn of time to blow up the bugs, melt the machines, and ignite the raging fires of liberty. Uh, they go through all these new weapons. You got the BR-14 uh adjudicator rifle mm -hmm. uh it says it delivers righteous righteous punishment uh righteous judgment i should say to your enemies with accuracy uh it penetrates armor yada yada they have the r36 eruptor rifle they got the cb9 exploding crossbow which is pretty cool crossbow is good this next this next one is on is what i want and then for the secondary ones they got the g123 thermite the grenade. Fucking thermite grenade that's cool as hell give it sticks to enemies and then blows up and sets them on fire i'm already saving up my medals for that they have the gp gp31 grenade pistol oh, grenade um pistol. they have the expert extraction pilot booster and that's nice for armor they have the c27 groundbreaker which is like a medium armor they have the uh, demolition specialist and they have the devastator and the thing about it is like even outside of these like war bonds which are like the big official updates they keep just they, 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 like literally every day every week they keep just incrementally adding things and weaving it into the law oh we've heard you know um, uh, Super Earth Intelligence, you know, has got reports of a new kind of enemy, and it's ne and the next day it's in the fucking game. Mm -hmm. So where the fuck did this thing come from? Yeah, and there's clues to little things that they're gonna like launch around the landscape. Well, what does this mean? Honestly, they've they've fucking nailed the live service aspect of this game, and every other company, Ubisoft, EA, all Activision, all the so-called big boys, need to be looking at what Arrowhead is doing because it's fucking how, how you're supposed to do it. Uh, let's move on to story number four, Gary. Uh, Devolver Digital and Nereal announced reality TV first-person shooter, The Crush House for PC. Uh, this is Sal Romano at Gamatsu. It's a follow-up from uh, what we talked about yesterday where they teased the game. Now we have the full official trailer. And it turns out Barrett nailed it. Barrett was right. Barrett predicted that this game, the like first-person shooter, it was going to mean that you're like a cameraman slash producer on this reality show. Do you think that Barrett is someone who generally is on point with his predictions or is this a rare win for him? I think Barrett's on point. I think Barrett's underrated. Oh, I think this is a rare win for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think Barrett's underrated. In I terms feel of like what with this, I have earned the title of Barrett PI. Yeah. No, yeah, Barrett has evolved into Barrett PI. Um, I want to live react to the trailer because I want to see what Gary has to say about okay. this. So again, this I'm game is going to sound sound oh, yeah, sexy sound. Okay. Malibu. What the, the year fuck 2000 is this? Knocking on the door. It's a and reality the TV show reality video game. TV show this side of the millennium is heating up. A new crop of sassy singles are mingling in the iconic mansion together. But can they get along or will the crush become a clash? Jay. Jay. What were you doing all night? It doesn't matter. Move your butt. The cast are coming in and you have a show to make. Oh, Grab so you're the behind the scenes on the show. Yep. Listen, the network loves your You're a producer and season, cameraman. But okay. we're still under pressure, so make sure you capture both drama and romance. Okay, so things are already heating up, for better or for worse. So be sure to film anything that's going to keep those ratings popping. The spicier, the better. This looks cool. I, I've not seen I, this trailer I, yet. You know, I like, it's a very strong concept. It's yeah. an original idea. It's into the zeitgeist, right? Because this yep. is the kind of shit's all over television. Everybody's loving reality TV show right now. I still got to watch Love Is Blind. I, I I don't watch any of that shit anymore. I can't do it. Dude, I've heard such good things about Love Is Blind though. And Jay, remember the network's number one. I actually have an idea for a reality no show. Happens, I'm gonna pitch this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you about it. Yeah, tell me about this afterwards. I really want to hear this. Stick to the show. Focus on your job. 
and don't ask questions you don't want answers to. Is this cast popular enough to go down the success slide, or will they have their hearts crushed into obscurity? Tune in, turn it up, and join the party in The Crush House. There was a show I want. I actually want to get around to watching. There was a show on one of the cable networks in recent years called Un, Unreal, that was basically uh, this. It was like behind. The, it was basically the story behind the scenes on a fake reality show. Mm -hmm. It was like a Bachelorette type show. But uh, so, wh wh who's making this, and what so platforms is it coming um, to? It's coming to PC. It's being pub published by Devolver Digital. It's being developed by Nereal, who did the Reigns games. Um, I, the quick key features I have for you here from the games page: uh, cast for each season's run. Uh, you choose between twelve eccentric personalities and find your four-person cast for each season's run. You mix and match conflicting or complementary attractions and watch as tensions run and sparks fly. Uh, the next one is that you quench your audience's thirst. Everyone with a television watches The Crush House uh, from foodies and divorce dads to butt guys and ferologists. I don't know what any of those words mean. Hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, with dozens of micro audiences to entertain, you'll have to be strategic to capture them all. So you're basically doing, it's a sim. It's a One reality the, TV show know, It's sim. interesting because it, it looks like they are kind of like trying to get into the dark side of it because there is a dark side to these shows, right? Yeah, oh, 100%. Now, cause, and, and, in, and in recent years, because some people on Love Island fucking killed themselves. Really? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now... They now they have to have like counselors and psychotherapists and people there to provide like emotional and mental well being for the guests because you can't put people through. I mean, it's it's TV for us, but like these people are actually going it's through some real scenario. shit. When, when, I, we're I was, laughing at it, but some of these people are getting fucking like real trauma. When I heard and that for love is blind, have a you have a duty of care to these people. For love is blind, you're getting married to somebody in f like four days and you don't know what this person looks like. So That's I wonder, I wonder if there's an element of, of how serious they're going to get with the dark side of this in that, like, oh, one of your contestants fucking killed themselves. Well done. Yeah. Like, you did not provide enough, like, emotional, you know, you Support. put this person through an emotional I don't emotional think they're going to get that dark. I feel like for what you see out of the art style here and for, like, the energy here. No, it's going to be more fun. I think it's going to be very quirky, fun. I'm sure they're going to get into, like, maybe some fucked up shit. But I don't think they're like going to go that hard. Manipulation Plus, I would, I would, goes on. I would uh, not... Um, Push it like uh, I think that way. Just like I think of Doki Doki Literature Club. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you're right. You know. The, yeah. That, that was actually what I was thinking. They could go. They could. They could, they could. They could go in that direction. And don't forget, Doki Doki Literature Club. Doki Doki Literature <laughs> Club didn't give you any clues to what kind of game it was until it dropped that bomb on you, right? So yeah. who knows? They, they could be doing something similar here. I don't think they will. I think they're going to do the dark side in a fun way. I think the door is open. But yeah, I, I do think that they'll do the dark side in a fun way. I think that makes a lot. I could see them easily doing that for the fact that this trailer seems very self-aware. The concept seems fun. And also it's Devolver. And Devolver, I feel like there's always, again, there's always some edge to Devolver digital games. And so we'll yeah. see what they do. No, I, I, I that's, that's on my list immediately. I'll put that on my Steam wish list as soon as I get home. Don't bet against uh, Barrett P.I. Don't bet against Barrett P.I. Uh, Greg, or Greg, Gary. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Uh, Gary, we just talked a lot about some big news today. But if I wanted something smaller, say the tiniest news I needed to know about, where would I go? I've been dreading this. Now, here's the thing, Gary. It's different now. It's changed. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that gets me off the hook. Yeah. So, yeah, you can actually so I can read, just read it this it. time. Yeah, it's probably okay. on the what, last page or so. Uh, page after this. Page after this one? Okay. All right. Yep. Wait, where is it? It's the highlighted one. Okay. So uh, we talked about a lot of big news. Right, okay, team, just, team me up I'll team you up again. Okay. The, Gary, this Crush House game is going to be humongous. <laughs> we talked about a lot of big news today, <laughs> but if I wanted something smaller, say the tiniest news I needed to know about, where would I go? You'd go to our last story, the Wii News Channel, that's Wii, W-E-E, -E, where we cover all the small news items you need to know about. There you have it. Story number five. Oh, I love the I, I, I like time. I like the Wii the Wii music. Yeah, no, uh, Andy absolutely killed the set as well. Um, oh, that's, that's fucking great. I love it. It's time for I'm Wii honored news. to be a part of this. Thank for thank you for being a well part done, of Andy. It. Is Andy over there? Tell him yeah, I said I good job. Uh, story number five. Uh, let's start with Inti Creates. They announced Puzzmix. Uh, this P U Z Z M I X. Not sold on the name. You know, it doesn't roll off the tongue as easily as so I like. So you just have to read these quickly as they're going by. No, these are just these are <laughs> these aren't real stories. Oh, these oh, these screen. aren't the actual stories. No, I just have bullet because I mean they look thing. like real stories. Six hundred game developers laid off. Shareholders are more rich than ever. Yeah. How am I supposed to fucking know this is reality and parody at this point? I mean, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely. I can't argue against that. I mean, I think once it gets to CEO loses job uh, and wife to AI, I think even again, that I'm like really that, <laughs> somewhat realistic. You know why not? It, it fucking all bets are off these days, Barrett. 
But yeah, Indie Creates announced Puzz Mix, uh, a puzzle music game uh, that launches on Switch are on April 5th. these the same 5th. every week, by the way? Yeah, these are the same Oh, you week. should come up with different gag gag story headlines every week. I every... think they would have to pay Andy more. Yeah, probably. <laughs> that's a lot of work. Uh, and also Barrett, because Barrett then has to reprogram it and all that shit. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of... VRS flat screen edition coming to PS5 later this summer. Um, I just like the music. I know, Such right? A bop. I, know, I fucking love it. Uh, Gary, it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where you write in, let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong, so we can correct it for those watching later on YouTube and listening later on podcast services around the globe. Barrett, what's happening? Chat's going crazy. Yeah, why is the chat blowing up? Barrett I can't have no idea. It's like Greg, being in a fucking XQC Greg chat or something, just an uh, endless stream hell? of fucking drivel. Did they go? Did we go to the Twitch? Like people are people are essentially being uh, saying the content. The stream up. switched. I think we switched to the other stream. Oh, is it because we went oh, wrong? Ke Kevin hit a button. Great. Kevin, <laughs> great. <laughs> I see Kevin comes into. I'm the... really sorry about I, that, I, guys. I, we, I've uh, been away for a while, but some things up. don't fucking change, uh, do they? Uh, Mike is supposed to switch it. <laughs> some no, things are Rock fucking perennial. For uh, like the first 30 minutes or so, and Roger accidentally played with the buttons early. I told Mike don't hit it, and he didn't translate that. So sorry about that. Stream. Wait, so uh, sorry, who are you blaming, Roger or Mike? Thing. We're uh, my bad. Oh, I didn't know the camera was on. I mean, Kevin <laughs> keeps saying my bad, so I think we blame Kevin. Okay, all right. Yeah. Should I redo the Wii News? Should I read it again? It at what point, at what point did it switch over? I, <laughs> was, it just, oh, was it just the live folks that missed it? Was it was just the live folks. So this is, this is the tough but thing whenever that mean we YouTube fuck video? up live where it's like, do, I, do we need to re-upload this now? Like, I don't know what the no, fuck No, we don't need do. to re-upload anything. We've made, we've made it through a great show. But my question is, on the YouTube video... It's well, gonna be the stream that they cut to. That's okay, what, then that's that why case, I'm like, do we need to fucking re-upload What was no. that? So what was the other stream? They're, They're playing, playing content, content warning. warning. Here, let's get through this real quick. I'm going to reread Wii News real quick. We're not going to redo anything because it was a small part. Uh, but just for the people watching the YouTube, I'll read it real quick. Podcast listeners, we're running it back. Uh, Wii News, again, Inti Creates announced Puzz Mix, a puzzle music game uh, that launches on Switch April 5th, coming to PS4, PS5, and PC later in the month. Uh, Ghost Runner will be free to claim on Epic Game Store from April 11th through the 18th. Sea of Thieves confirms shared progression and crossplay with its PS5 release. Eddie, Gordo, DLC, out today in Tekken 8. Turbo Golf Racing out today, PC and PS5. C Smash VRS out today, Meta Quest. And you got the flat screen edition of that game coming to PS5 later this summer. Now it's time for your wrong, where you write in a list of what we got wrong as we got it wrong, so we can correct it for those watching later on YouTube and listening later on podcast services around the globe. Uh, Kebab says the way Blessing pronounced Draugr is accurate to how it's pronounced in God of War. I think that's how I know how to pronounce it, is because, yeah, they call out the Draugr in God is, of War. Is that, is that the reference standard for Norse mythology now, is how they say <laughs> it in God, God of War? War? Yeah, <laughs> God of War can do no wrong, apparently. Um, Kebabs says, don't forget the Super Chats. Here's the thing, Kebabs. We're 10 minutes past the show. Uh, we're 10 minutes past, because, again, it's a Gary Wood episode. Sorry. You know what I mean? No, it's all good. We can, I, we can probably revisit those tomorrow or figure something out. Um, but that does bring us to the end of Kind of Funny Games Daily. Gary, thanks so much for joining me on I've this one. I've thoroughly enjoyed being back. I've genuinely missed this. Yes. And I hope I, I hope I get to come back and do more. Yeah. I hope you come back and do more too. I think we need to make that happen more. Um I won't I won't go off on tangents and make you run long every time. I'm trying to be better about that. I kinda like but I like going but on. I, my first you. time it's back in a brand. while, you know, there's a lot. It's not a gear show up. if we don't make it to at least seventy five minutes. Had James on the Daily show. blue balls for so long. I know. You, yeah, you had to let it big go. Fucking load. You had a dude, you had a bust. Yeah. Why did you have to take it there? Why did you come on? It's, uh, listen, Remember Peter Gary North, does. Barrett, the shotgun? Who? You might be too young for I, that. <laughs> Gary, I know I, that I act like a 50-year-old man, but you have to remember I'm 29. Yeah. <laughs> I know who you're talking about, Gary. <laughs> you do? <laughs> How do you know? You're younger yeah, than Barrett. Because I'm a sick man. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm a sick man. But also, he's older than me, technically. I'm like, yeah, by like eight months or something like that. Oh, yeah. Barrett, you gotta go, you gotta go <laughs> check that out. You gotta, know, you gotta know your history, Barrett. Wait until you get home, though, Barrett. Don't check it out at work. Yeah. Shout out to Peter North. Not or not. I don't work. know what this history is. But yeah. uh, of course, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday, we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about <laughs> live on YouTube, Twitch, and podcast services around the globe. If you love what we do, support us with the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or YouTube to get all of our shows ad-free. Watch us record them live and get a daily exclusive show. Until next time, Game Daily. <laughs>